If you're looking to build your first PC build in 2023, almost 2024, and you have no idea how to choose the right GPU for your needs, this is the perfect video for you. At the end of this video, you'll easily identify from the name of the GPU, what performance to expect from it, the resolution it will manage to play, if it's adequate for workstation, application and much more. This is the second video of the PC building guide series, so make sure to check out the first video right here or at the end of this one. Enough talking, let's get started. First of all, you need to understand that there are two main GPU manufacturers. AMD, Radeon and Nvidia Jeffers. But if you read the title, there's also Intel, which we'll talk about later. But it won't be the main focus of this video, since Intel GPUs are not as relevant as AMD and Nvidia ones. Let's start with Nvidia, since it's the main player on the market and you'll find many more used NVIDIA GPUs, meaning you can probably score a better deal. These two are examples of NVIDIA GPUs. The GTX 1080 Ti, this is actually a 3060, but for the sake of this example, let's pretend it's a 1080 Ti. And the RTX 4090. You can find video reviews for both GPUs right here. The first three letters we encounter, GTX and RTX, stands for the kind of technology, the architecture. GTX was used in older generations of GPUs. They're not capable of ray tracing. If you don't know what ray tracing is, it's a game technology. You can find many video examples if you look for it on YouTube. On the other hand, RTX means that it's more recent since the first RTX gen was launched at the end of 2018 and is capable of ray tracing. The first two numbers after the letters stands for the generation. The 1080 Ti would be the 10th generation, but for the purpose of this video, we'll consider it as Gen 1. I also don't recommend anything older than it. Well, the RTX 3090 is from the 4th generation and the 3rd gen of RTX cards. Now you're able to tell if the GPU is ray tracing capable and the generation, for example, of the RTX 3060, which is this GPU right here. This bad boy is ray tracing compatible, 3rd gen CPU and 2nd gen RTX GPU. Of course, the latest generations are way more powerful than the older ones, generally speaking. The 3rd and 4th numbers indicate the actual model of that generation. We have 60, 70, 80 and 90. 60 being the entry level card and 90 being the top of the line. In the example before, the GTX 1080 Ti would be almost the top of the line, while the RTX 4090 is the best you can get right now. Generally speaking, the 60 cards, so RTX 3060 like this one, 4060, etc., are great if you want to play 1080p, even high refresh rate. And some will be able to play light 1440p as well. The 70s are what most people should get. Amazing for 1080p and perfect for 1440p even 144 Hz. You can get away with playing 4K, but it's not the best experience you'll ever have. If you care about workstation performances, the 70s are a great fit for 1080p and even 1440p video editing as well. The 80s are perfect for 4K gaming and 1440p, but even 4K video editing. Lastly, the 90s are great if you want to waste money. <laughs> I'm joking, don't get mad, but they're really overkill. If you want no compromises whatsoever while gaming in 4K, or you're going to edit 4K videos or 4K animations, these are the GPUs for you. How should you compare different generations though? This is an extreme oversimplification, but the top of the line GPU, so the 90, corresponds to the 80 of the next gen, usually the 80 to the 70 and so on. But the best way to make a comparison is to watch video comparisons between GPUs in games or in the tasks you're interested in. You can find videos for the RTX 3060, 4090, 1080 Ti and 4070 on my channel. Lastly, there are the Ti versions of each card, which is slightly more performant than the base version, but less performant than the next model. For example, the 3070 Ti is slightly more performant than the 3070, but less performant than the 3080. Have you understood everything about Nvidia GPUs? If so, you'll surely understand AMD Radeon GPUs as well. The concept is similar. We've got a prefix, 
in this case only RX. There are others from older GPUs, but we're not going to consider them. Right after the prefix, we have the number for the index of the generation. If the GPU has three numbers, either four or five. If it has four numbers, five, six or seven. Three numbers mean older generations, while four numbers newer generations. So for GPUs with four digits, the five index represents the first generation, six the second and seven the third and latest gen. After the generation index, we have the model numbers 500, 600, 700, 800, 900 and 950. Just like Nvidia, a higher number translates into better performances. If you're considering an older GPU such as this RX 460, we're going to have 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90. So you can tell me what generation the RX 6800 is from, right? There's the 6. So it's second gen, exactly. Even AMD GPUs can have a suffix XT or XTX, just like DTI for Nvidia graphics card. XT is slightly more performant than the base version and XTX is even more performant. Usually AMD top of the line GPU are less performant than the top of the line GPU from Nvidia. For example, the RX 6900 XTX is less performant than the RTX 4090. But once again, it depends on the use case and the best way is to see a direct comparison between the two cards you're interested in. Lastly, a quick note about Intel GPUs. There are three categories, Intel Arc 3, 5, or 7, just like the CPUs. The ARC3 has the A310 and A380. Once again, greater numbers, better performances. For ARC5, we only have the A580. For ARC7, A750 and A770. The A770 has similar performances to an RTX 3060 Ti while costing much more, so I wouldn't recommend it. For the moment. This video is a simplification of the matter. I would need a one hour long monologue to go into greater details and no one would watch it. But if you have any questions feel free to leave it down here in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer all doubts. Since you're down there make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell. It's completely free for you but it helps me a ton. Thank you so much for sticking until the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao. And by the way, if you want to check out the first video about how to choose the right CPU for you, check it out right here. Ciao.